So far, we have developed two classes. Namely, under the model package, we have the product class. Under the console apps package, we have the uh, product app class. And what we would like to do now is to develop a new class under the third package, namely JUnit underscore tests. The reason we want to do this is because the way we try to verify the correctness of our model class products in the product app. For example, you can see over here, uh, we, we were trying to test the default constructor and also the overloaded version of the constructor. And when we try to print uh, print out the uh, object variable, uh, implicitly we know that it's gonna call the toString method. So, so far we have been trying to test the correctness of these uh, these two uh, constructors and the toString method by the console application. This is indeed very, very limited and restricted to be completely manual. Let me show you what I meant. Every time, if I want to see if my methods are actually correct, what I need to do is I need to click on the launch and then I need to use my eyes to manually inspect the output values in the console one by one, character by character. However, we are humans. Our judgments sometimes are very uh, error prone, especially for the routine checks character by character. So that's not the way to go to verify the correct the correctness of your software using console application, especially as we grow the number of methods and classes in your projects. A much better way, a much uh, and a much system, a much more systematic way is to use the so-called unit testing framework. In Java, it's called JUnits, and that's something I would like to show to you uh, from this video onwards. Uh, if you took uh, the 1022 with me in the past winter, you would have already seen many JUnit test cases already. If you haven't, again, that's okay. Now is the time to pick up the group, uh, good practice. All right, so let me, first of all, uh, I want to create a JUnit uh, test class. Let's see how we can do it. Since, uh, since I created this pro uh, project Apple shop here, I have not imported the, J the uh, JUnit's uh, library. So that's gonna be, uh, I will be prompted to add a library reference in a moment. So what I would do is uh, right click on the JUnit's uh, tests uh, package, and then I will say new, and rather than class, I'm going to choose JUnit's test case. Choose that. And please make sure you choose the new JUnit 4. So that's the version we are using. We are not using 3, and we are not using the uh, Jupyter test either. So it should be JUnit 4. And you want to give a name. Uh, the convention I would like to adopt for this course would be uh, for every JUnit test, you will simply put a test over here as the first word, and then whatever class you want to test, you put a class name. So in this case, we want to test for the model class products. And later on, we might test for other model classes as well. So I'll say test products okay just make sure i spell properly yeah apparently okay test products that's the class name and then i would say finish and for the very first time it will prompt me to actually add junit 4 library to the build path since when i first created the project you wouldn't add it to uh add it there by default so i gotta add it explicitly this will only need to be done once and for all so i would say okay all right, so you can see now under the project, we also got JUnit 4 uh, library reference in the build path, which is good. All right, so now we got one class over here under JUnit tests uh, package, which is here, okay? And by default, they will simply put one test case over here, which will simply just fail. Just to remind you uh, that you should really put your own test cases and put as many as necessary. Okay? We can just give it a try. So uh, there are two ways to run it, right? Either you can double click on this and then you can launch. And if you put your mouse over the launch button, they will say run test products.java. That's one way to do. Or another way you can right click on the JUnit test class you want to run and you can say run as JUnit test. You can try either way. Let me try this way. And it's not surprising, we'll simply simply get a red bar. Let me just briefly talk about this uh, dif uh, the distinction between red bar and also green bar. Red bar simply means this uh, there is at least one test case that will uh, test method that actually failed to run, that actually failed to pass. Uh, if you get a green bar, that means every test in your uh, test class actually has passed. Okay, that's the simple distinction, right? So we definitely don't want a red bar. Red bar means you got at least one failure. The, one, the way to cheat, uh, to cheat uh, is by comment this out. So we don't really have this fail anymore, okay? And then if I simply rerun it again, wow, we get a green bar. 
but we shouldn't fool, our, uh, fool ourselves because this is uh, even though it's a green bar, but we are not really testing any anything useful. So just be careful. You want to add as many test uh, test methods as possible into your test class like this, and they want to make sure every one of them is trying to test certain. Uh, aspects of your software of your model classes that's something i will try to show to you in the in the rest of the tutorial series as well our goal right now is to uh test the product class over here and then specifically we're going to test the two overloaded version of the constructor and also the uh accessors that we got i will test some of them and also i want to test the two accessor methods that we added earlier which uh which are the get price and also the to string so that's kind of the uh the roadmap that we're going for uh, we're going for in total i'm going to develop three test cases when I, whenever i say test case i really meant a j unit test method okay i got, i might just use the terms interchangeably all right, let's now go back to the test products over here. And initially, since we have not used any assertions, so you might see some yellow underline over here saying that you have not used any uh, uh, assertions from the assert uh, package. That's okay, but we're gonna use it very soon. Let me just delete this just for now. And let me show you how to develop your own test case from scratch for your laboratory uh, ex exercises and also for your programming tests uh usually you will be given some starter test cases but i would suggest you also try to develop your own test cases as well just to complete all the boundary cases to be tested right that's something i will also show you to give you some idea but if you really are interested in software testing strategy it's kind of beyond the scope of this course but there will be some fourth year courses on software testing uh, strategy but if you're interested in chatting about your strategy you can also drop by my office hour i would love to talk to you as well let's now try to develop our first test case and whenever you want to develop a test case always put a tag so at and test t should be capitalized and then you want to uh every test case is like a normal mutator method meaning that it does not return anything so and must be public so public void so these phrases are always standard just remember okay public void and then we should give a name for the test uh it's kind of up to you uh my convention is i will always start with a test just to indicate it's a method for g unit testing purpose and then i can put underscore between the compound words pretty much like for the package uh if you prefer just to have test maybe product maybe uh test products and then you want to say uh test case number one that's fine but i will rather just separate them that's what i like to do usually so i will say test products underscore one okay but for the tutorial series since eventually you have to submit a code so you have to type the test name verbatim okay and no parameters to be passed for every test case so that's how you should start with for every test case or test method and inside the test method, in some way, it's very similar to how you would develop a console application, except that you should not uh, have any uh, system that out of print line statements over here. If you try to recall the diagram that we spoke about before, let me just remind you very quickly. Let me go back to my iPad. If you remember this separation of concern that we spoke about, right? And right now, we are actually doing the JUnit test uh, package over here. And then remember, we only got assertions. We don't have any print statement, right? I'm just trying to draw some connection to what we have seen before. What should we do over here? Let's create, uh, let's try to test the default constructor over here, which is uh, over here. That's the constructor taking no parameters, right? That's the first method we would like to do. What I can do is I can say product P is assigned to the address of a new product objects, right? But you can see product over here is not, uh, cannot be resolved. If you move your mouse over, it cannot be resolved because we are trying to refer to the product class that's outside the current package, which uh, which is JUnit tests. But we so we have to import it. Go to the end of the product, uh, the word products, and then Control Space, and now we can choose to import it. So that should be the product from the model package. The first hit, click on that. And you will see under the import statements, you can see one of them is actually uh, import model products, right? That's something we have seen already before. All right. So now I want to call 
the default version, right? Just like that. Let me maximize it. So after this, uh, what can we do? In the case of console application, you can simply just try to print out uh, the various return values to the console by calling methods on P. That's what you can do. But now we want to do something slightly different. We want to automate the process of testing. And every test is more like an assertion. And for every assertion, you keep in mind this pr principle over here. I'm going to write it down. Think of each assertion is to verify the actual value of method call against its expected value. So here I'm talking about actual versus expected. You should really know what the expected or correct value is before you try to call the method and get its actual value. If they match, that means uh, the assertion will pass. If not, the assertion actually fell. And if the assertion fell, that means its containing test case will also fail, meaning that the containing test class will also fail, meaning that we get a red bar, right? You can see the logic over here. All right, so let me just uh, capitalize it to say actual and expected, okay, just to emphasize that. Let's now do our first assertion. We know very well from the earlier video, since this default constructor simply does nothing. So all the attribute values will simply just be null, right? So why don't we start with the model? And the very useful assertion, a uh, very simple one is called assert null. So this will be one assertion you should know, assert null. And we can simply use P and uh, on the, uh, from the earlier video, I asked you to review the dot notation. Hopefully you uh, had a chance to look at that. So now how do we call the method? I will trace the method call uh, for uh, test product three when I developed the uh, last test case. But for now, let's simply do some programming and then uh, maybe use a little bit of debugger to help us understand. So here I can say P is a context object. As soon as I say dot, uh, Eclipse will give to me all the applicable methods that can be invoked on this particular context object P. So the one I want to do is get model, right? Get model, which is going to return a string. So you can see P dot get model here is an expression of type string. And I want to assert that this particular string expression is going to be null. Right? We, we actually have seen that before from the console application. You can review the earlier video if you got any doubts. So this will be the first assertion. We can launch the JUnit test case right away. And you can see we got green bar, right? All right, so next next one. What about we want to do another string uh, return value, which will be to get finish. So let me just try to show you different variants so you can definitely play with them. Another very useful one is uh, assert true. This uh, one called assert true and the other one called assert false. So inside the assert true and assert false, there's only one uh, value to be passed. And that one must be a Boolean expression, right? So here I can say p dot get finish. And similar to b, uh, p dot get model over here, p dot get finish is simply a string expression. And I want to assert that equals equals null. So this, you can think about this is a string expression. I'm, tra I'm trying to say that that string value is equals equals null. Its address is simply useless. It's simply just null. And the expression I'm highlighting here with the equal equal is more like relational expression. So that one is going to be true or false. That's why I can say assert true. On the other hand, if I only put p dot get finish, I'm going to get compilation error. If I if I move my move my mouse over, it's gonna say assert true is expecting some boolean value over here, but the argument p dot get finish is simply just string. It doesn't match. All right. So let me put it back. I have a little mind teaser for you. This is easy to understand. What if I want to do assert false over here? Apparently. If I also put p dot get finish equals equal, uh, equals equals null over here, let's think about what's going to happen, right? Assert false is uh, you can kind of guess what the meaning is. Assert false makes sure if the assertion only pass if the boolean expression over here evaluate to false. Assert true will pass if the boolean expression written over here will evaluate to true, right? And we know very well this particular boolean expression evaluate to true. And true is going to make a third false to fail, right? Makes it making sense. How can we modify this particular expression so that a third false can pass? 
how can we massage this particular boolean expression from true to false that's basically what i'm asking so what operator did you learn what logical operator did you learn from the first year that can do this all right so hopefully you already have guessed that it should be not equal to so that'll be the ex uh, exclamation mark that's one way to do i will put another way you can also say it is not the case that p dot get finish equals equals now you should really convince yourself this expression over here and this expression over here they're logically equivalent all right if you got any trouble again get uh get back to me either in the q a or in the office hour okay so let's now talk about uh other attributes and the next one i'll like to talk about will be the storage which is a, an integer. So p dot get storage should really give me an integer value. I want to make sure the default value is really return value is really zero. To really assert about integer value, you you can definitely say assert true. Okay, let me just use it since you just learned it. Assert true, and over here I can say p dot get storage. Over here, and that one. Well, if I only put this, I know that it's not going to compile because assert true is expecting some boolean expression here, but this expression is integer. So well, I want to say this integer equals equals zero. And again, I'm pretty sure you know very well, equals equals in Java is a relational operator for comparing values. On the other hand, a single equal is the assignment operator for variables, right? So that's why if I change that to single equal sign here, it's not going to compile, all right? That's one way to do it. You can definitely say assert true, assert. You can also say assert false, but I'll leave that to you if you want to do the mind teaser yourself, okay? What would be another way to do it? Another very useful uh, useful assertion is called assert equals. Okay, and for assert equals, it's a, there's a very important principle you have to remember because later on in your laboratory exercises and your programming test, usually you will be given JUnit test cases to start with. And you have to infer all the relevant classes and methods yourself. That's something I will cover in more detail uh, in the part two of the tutorial next week. But I just want to tell you that for assert equals, the principle is, let me write it down here. Whenever you got assert equals, idea would be expected first and then actual, right? Remember we talk about, we want to verify the actual value against its expected value, but expected value by the convention of J units should come first and then actual. So now in this case, let me just put a comma over here. We're gonna put expected here in a moment. What should be the uh, method call we want to test? Let's say p.getStorage. And we know that, that one, this one is going to return an integer. And we want to see what should be the expected value, zero over here so do not reverse uh the uh, uh these two values for example a common mistake might be you, you want to put it here and say zero it might still pass but you're actually confusing uh at a meta level you're confusing yourself about how the assertion should be interpreted just remember always put the expected uh value first followed by the actual method call value all right okay so that's about the uh, assert equals and assert equals specifically is a very interesting assertion which i will cover in more details later in the course when i speak about the equals method in java all right 